As women reach middle age, many will gain about one pound a year. This steady increase in weight is attributed to age rather than menopause itself. However, the transition into menopause has an unwelcome effect on body composition with accelerated gains in fat mass, often showing up in the belly, and losses of lean mass. So even if the scale is not changing, your body composition and fat distribution may be. Improving insulin sensitivity, while not a cure-all, gives you a chance to mitigate these changes, and you can achieve that by making insulin's job easier. I will show you how in this video. During our younger reproductive years, women have hormonal advantages that enhance insulin sensitivity. These advantages are due in part to higher estrogen levels and a related increase in sex hormone binding globulin, which is a protein that keeps androgens, like testosterone, low. As a woman moves into perimenopause and menopause, those hormonal advantages go away. That is a problem because when your cells become less sensitive to insulin, in other words, they become insulin resistant, your blood sugar and insulin levels remain elevated. High insulin promotes the storage of fat, much of which ends up as visceral or belly fat over the menopause transition. Visceral fat is not the fat you can pinch. That is called subcutaneous fat. Visceral fat builds behind the abdominal muscles, pushing out as it accumulates. It's not uncommon to have both types of fat stored in your midsection. However, the deep visceral fat is more metabolically active than the outer fat, increasing inflammation and the risk of health conditions like insulin resistance. So if nothing changes, we see that reaching menopause drops us into a back and forth cycle where insulin resistance leads to visceral fat and vice versa. You cannot naturally turn back the hands of time, hormonally speaking, but you can improve insulin sensitivity by making insulin's job easier. Insulin's job is to move excess sugar out of the blood and into the cells. It's released into the bloodstream in response to rising blood sugar levels. Therefore, if insulin is having an easy time performing its task, the level in your blood will mimic the rise and fall of blood sugar. You cannot test insulin levels at home, but you can test your blood sugar levels. What you wanna see is a controlled blood sugar rise after eating that returns to its pre-meal level within two hours after eating. To test, you can use a monitor from your local pharmacy called a glucometer. These monitors test a finger prick of blood to estimate your blood glucose or blood sugar level. You can test before a meal and then in one hour increments following a meal. Another option is to wear a continuous glucose monitor or CGM like the one I have on my arm from Levels. Levels makes it possible for people without diabetes to monitor their blood sugar. Since insulin resistance can lead to type 2 diabetes, it is a useful tool for helping you make better food choices before the disease manifests. A CGM gives you advantages over a glucometer. For one thing, the feedback is continuous, so you get a clear picture of that two-hour period following a meal. It also requires little effort. You simply apply the small monitor onto your arm, and it sends data back to the app. There's no need to prick your finger, and most of the time, I forget it's there. Also, with levels, you have the ability to analyze the macros of your daily diet. So you can enter what you ate for the day, much like you would with a nutrition tracking tool. But with levels, you see what those carbs, fats, and proteins are doing to your blood sugar level. It is a great feature for anyone who is trying to really dial in their diet for the best metabolic health. If you are interested in using a CGM to monitor your blood sugar, you can use my link, levels.link forward slash Dr. Becky, to get an additional two free months on your annual membership. Whether you use a monitoring device or not, there are three things you can do to make insulin's job easier. You can give insulin less to do, give it more time off, and give it more places to go. Let's go through some numbers so you have a clear goal to hit. When insulin resistance is present, insulin cannot efficiently move sugar out of your blood and into your cells because carbohydrates break down into sugar, eat fewer of them, and you make insulin's job easier because it has less to do. If you're new to low carb eating, start by aiming for no more than 125 grams of carbs per day. If you are already eating a low carb diet but experiencing the fat gain consequences of menopause, aim for 50 grams or fewer a day. 
If you aren't clear on which foods are low carb, you can download a list of 100 low carb foods for free on my website. When there's no food coming in, insulin gets a break. So if counting carbs does not thrill you, count hours instead. Intermittent fasting has been found to be a safe practice for postmenopausal women of normal health, and it has also been found to be an effective way to reduce belly fat. If you are new to intermittent fasting, make it a goal to stop eating three hours before bed. In the evening hours, your circadian clock influences the production of hormones that prepare you for sleep. Eating too close to bed can work against this hormonal shift, keeping your blood sugar and insulin elevated and blocking fat burning overnight. If you already practice intermittent fasting, try shifting your eating window to earlier in the day so you eat your last meal by 4 or 5 p.m. This early time-restricted eating schedule has been shown to improve insulin sensitivity. Getting regular exercise makes insulin's job easier because it improves how well your muscles take in glucose. The good news is you can choose the type of exercise you do because both aerobic and resistance exercises have been shown to be beneficial. If you're not currently exercising, get moving in a way that you enjoy, whether that be walking, swimming, jogging, or going to the gym. If you've already established an exercise routine, work on combining resistance exercises like weightlifting with aerobic exercises like biking, swimming, or using a treadmill. This combination has been shown to enhance insulin sensitivity. Menopause sets the stage for weight gain, but you can take action to prevent that from happening. By focusing on making insulin's job easier, you encourage fat loss and improve insulin sensitivity. You reduce insulin's workload when you reduce your carb intake, stop eating before bed, and exercise. These tasks take some focus and may require you to shift a few routines, but I have found that they add so much quality to life, they can do the same for you. If you'd like to get a CGM from Levels to see how the foods you eat affect you, you can click on the link in the description area below this video. I will also leave a link to my list of low-carb foods. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.